Yes part 7 is here I hope you all enjoy. Also for all those who haven't seen my community post I'm gonna post more what ifs videos on some other DX type what ifs that I've been reading so far but don't worry I'll upload this current fanfic still just wanted some type to create each part more faster. Okay enough of wasting your time let's start part 7. We are located in the home of the protagonist. It was 7 a.m. It had been a day since Issei's victory against Razor. The establishment would be completely silent, if it weren't for the noise coming from the kitchen. Some rather pretty hands moved from one place to another, cutting and preparing different foods. The toaster removed the buns with a beep, making the movement of the hands stop dead. One of the hands took a piece of toast and brought it to his mouth, taking a small bite. Although only the lower half of her face was visible, the small satisfying smile that appeared on her face confirmed her identity. No one could smile like her, after all. Wake up. Wake up. Oh I'll cut you into a thousand pieces. The alarm blared loudly, causing a hand to reach out from inside the blanket and shut it off with a snap. The subject showed his face above the warm blankets, denoting the very sleepy face of our beloved protagonist. Ah, I want to see some breasts, Issei quickly covered his mouth upon hearing her words. Shit, I thought I had it under control. He cursed himself out loud. Calm down, partner. The thickest and proudest voice known to all spoke through the hand of its wielder. Before, you only thought about touching them all the time. Now, you only think about seeing them. It's a great progress. Deidre would declare, quite proud that his bearer is tackling his greatest weakness in a great way. Issei rubbed his hair back with a small grateful smile on his face. Thank you. I can always count on you to cheer me up, Deidre. Their chat was interrupted when someone opened the door, making Issei pay special attention. Good morning. The well-known dragon would comment, carrying a large tray with food in her hands. I hope you're hungry. Wu. Issei would exclaim with little stars in his eyes, almost jumping out of her bed when he saw the endless amount of food. That looks delicious. Issei's words caused a small smile to shoot across Tiamat's face as she closed the door. Yes, today was going to be a pretty normal day. Start of Arc Chapter 12. Returning to the Academy. Ah. Issei would yell with a lot of frustration, burying her face in the books. Why did I have to leave the academy for over a month? This is horrible, Issei would exclaim, with a rather downcast tone. The chestnut was in the living room, receiving lessons from Tiamat. At least, in all subjects, except history. It's incredible how humanity has changed during these last thousand years, Tiamat would comment, reading a book with some interest. Can I take a break? Issei would ask, raising his face from her books. Since yesterday the only thing I do is study, besides eating and sleeping. You won't even let me go to the bathroom by myself. Tiamat would lower the book a little, staring at it. I can't risk it. You can escape through the vent. I think my body doesn't fit in such a small place. Issei would answer with a little nervous drop of sweat. Come on, you only need last week. Tiamat would say, hiding his face again with the book. It's true, Issei would say with renewed joy. The 14 hours a day of study was worth it, after all. Issei would bury his face in the physics book. After a few seconds, Tiamat would lower her book a bit to give him a look. He was watching him for a while, until he finally found the words to speak to her. Are your parents coming back tomorrow? Yeah, Issei answered, looking away from his book just to catch Tiamat's disappointed look. When we finish this, will you visit me again? I would ask, his concerned expression hidden by the book. Of course, Issei's vigorous response would make Tiamat put her book down immediately, denoting an impressed expression. You said yourself that I have many things to learn. Besides, a small blush would appear on Issei's face, diverting his gaze from Tiamat's piercing eyes. I'd like to spend time with you here and in the familiar kingdom, not just train, you know, Issei would look at Tiamat again, to see his impressed expression grow even more. But if you just want to train me, I won't have a problem with it. A large number of books fell to the floor, the product of Tiamat's big hug, which had taken Issei completely by surprise. Let's repeat what we did a few days ago, please. Tiamat would exclaim with a grateful voice, while a sweet smile graced his face. Thanks to the words of the dragon, Issei was able to get out of his state and responded to the hug. Of course, it was great for me too. 
the chestnut's words only made Tiamat hug him with even more happiness. Line jump. It was already completely dark. Issei and Tiamat were doing the last reviews, before the woman left for her home. Issei looked up for a second, looking at Tiamat. I quickly looked down from him and continued writing. What's going on? Asked Tiamat, who had somehow caught Issei's gaze without taking her face off the book. Nothing. I would say, rubbing my hair with a bit of frustration. I was just wondering how long it would take me to learn the basic magical moves. It will take much less time than reaching your balance breaker. Tiamat would look up from him, watching him intently. They are basic spells, you won't have much trouble with them. The only thing that will cost you is being able to use them with few increases, due to your current condition. You mean because of the almost meager magical reserves? Issei would ask, somewhat disgusted by his lack of magic. Exact. Tiamat agreed. Still, it's something you need to learn. To give you an example, spells that function as blocks could save your life. There are also spells that allow you to boost your magical attacks to an even higher degree, among others. He would conclude the dragon, waving her hand to indicate that the list was much longer. Shields, power-ups, Issei would think out loud, remembering that Razor had done something similar. I think in about 15 minutes I'll be leaving. Tiamat would comment, noting that the clock hanging behind the TV was already pointing at midnight. Okay. Issei would reply, before giving her a big smile, making Tiamat blink in slight surprise. Thanks for everything. The brunette grabbed the dragon's hand, causing a tiny blush to appear on her face. Really? I don't know how to repay you. You've been helping me so much lately, Issei would comment, with a very sincere tone. If it wasn't for you, I don't know if he would have gotten this far in such a short time. The hold on her hand slowly became more personal as her fingers intertwined unconsciously. You have given me your precious time without asking for anything in return, Issei would widen her smile even more forcing Tiamat to smile at the nice words that were shaking her chest more than she expected. You are amazing. I couldn't have wasted my time on anything else. Tiamat's answer would make Issei look at her carefully. Well, maybe I could have spent it, picking a fight or two. But I don't regret a thing. Spending time with you was quite nice, besides you've helped me a lot too. She would conclude with her beautiful smile still in effect on her face, making a small smile appear on Issei's face. Do you know something? Tiamat blinked, regarding him closely. When we first met, you hardly ever smiled. You always acted so serious, and even a little cold at times. But now, you smile a lot more often. I'm glad to see that, because you look so much prettier when you're happy. Tiamat couldn't help but blush weakly at the brunette's innocent words, making the woman's smile grow even more. That's because of you. Tiamat's words, adding to the warm squeeze she gave to their clasped hands made Issei look at her with a small blush. If you hadn't been so good to me, chances are I would never have gone back to feeling so, special. When he finished his words, both of them stared directly into each other's eyes, without any kind of interruption. The smiles were still in force on their faces, making the comforting silence that had been generated between the two of them noticeably more comfortable. The grip tightened even more, this time from Issei. Unfortunately, the beautiful atmosphere that they had generated between them was completely broken when the noise and the lights of a car appeared outside the house, causing Issei to become visibly alarmed, and separate his hand from Tiamat's in a sudden movement. Shit! He exclaimed, raising his hands to his head. They're my parents. Why did they arrive at this hour? They're supposed to be here at dawn. I'm leaving right now. He would say Tiamat seriously, creating a magic circle at his feet. I wouldn't want to cause you trouble with your parents by my presence. Before disappearing, the dragon raised her hand in greeting, while a small smile appeared on her face. See you later. Issei just smiled at her, before throwing his face on top of the books. Issei's parents entered the house, and the first thing they saw was Issei sleeping on top of the books. Neither of them gave it importance and they went up to the second floor, with the idea of going to bed as soon as possible. After a few seconds, Issei opened one of his eyes to verify that the ground was safe. Finally, she looked up the stairs and breathed a huge sigh of relief. In these special cases, my parents' disaffection always saves me. Line jump. I'm going out to the academy. Issei would say in a low voice, 
while she held her ear so that the small celestial magic circle could not be seen. Okay. Did your parents say anything about your absence? Tiamat's voice echoed through the communicator, causing Issei to look up from her to the sky. Although they don't pay much attention to me, it's very rare that they haven't received a message from the academy. Most likely, the president took over somehow. It's what sounds most logical. See you after the academy. The communication was cut off, causing Issei to lower her hand. I haven't seen her in a while. Issei would think with some nostalgia when he saw the academy from the gate. Eyes. Oh, e eyes. The scream clearly recognized by the chestnut made him visibly startle. Issei was caught up in a heartbeat by his two friends, who left a trail of dust in their wake. Issei, are you all right? Motohama asked, adjusting his glasses as he looked at his partner with some concern. They informed us that you had left on a trip with your parents for an urgent matter, but that is not an excuse for not answering the calls, friend. Matsuda would say, resting his hand on Issei's shoulder. Sorry. Issei looked in various directions, looking for a valid excuse. I forgot my cell phone at home. Oh, brother, you are one of those who no longer exist. Matsuda commented, giving him a small slap on the back. Issei could only smile nervously at such a statement. Look, it's the pervert duo, gross. Issei blinked in confusion upon hearing the whisper of one of the women in his class, causing him to look at both of them with special attention. Matsuda rubbed his bald head with a nervous smile, while Matsuda adjusted his glasses, ready to answer. You see, we've earned quite a reputation in this time you've been away. I guess it's not something you should be proud of, Issei commented, seeing that Motohama seemed to be proud of. His nickname, hey, is that guy with them? The whisper from one of the girls made Issei roll his eyes. No, I don't think so. If I remember correctly, he never participated in all the disgusting things the two of them did when he was still at the academy. But he's always with them, so maybe we should be a little careful, just in case. Perhaps. Great, I didn't even do anything at the academy, and they already see me as a freak. Issei would think with his eyes rolling. Even so, a small smile would appear on Issei's face. Not that it bothers me too much. I've never stood out in institutions for being a sociable person, and for that very reason I ended up with Matsuda and Motohama. Issei would watch as Matsuda and Motohama smiled at him, as they talked about different topics. They may be hopeless perverts, but they are very good friends. The chestnut would close her eyes with happiness. I do not regret anything. Line jump. Hum. Issei would look at his notebook with a frown, before shaking his hair in frustration. It was to be expected. I can't learn everything I missed in a month with only 28 hours. Especially, if we talk about math, she would think, with a tired expression at the end. Hey, Issei. The brunette turned around to see his friend Matsuda. We're going on a little expedition where the kendo girls change, do you want to join us? He would whisper under his breath, while he looked in various directions. No, thanks. Issei would answer, with a shaky smile. I would not like to receive a beating from so many women. Hum, as you wish, Matsuda would say, with a raised eyebrow seeing that his friend had changed his attitude a lot in these last few days. Issei looked back to the front and gave a little tired sigh. As she got up from her chair to go get some fresh air, Kiba appeared in the room, causing all the women to sigh. Seeing this, Issei immediately turned serious. Line jump. So, you've been trained by your familiar. Rias would comment with some surprise in her words, keeping her gaze raised. It must be a rare familiar, because it's rare to find familiars wanting to join you, since you're weaker than them to begin with. Rias would look down from him, staring at Issei. By the way, with your current strength do you think you can surpass it? Not at all. Issei would answer firmly. She is very strong. I see, Rias would say, with a hand on her chin. It's interesting, without a doubt. He would comment with a smile. What do you think guys? The entire entourage nodded, indicating that they agreed with Rias. President, if you want I can show you the place where we were training. And also, I could meet you. Issei would comment with a smile, getting up from the chair. What do you think? You said earlier that she doesn't get along with devils. It would be best to wait for her to come on her own, don't you think? Asia would ask, giving her point of view on the subject. Hmm, Issei rubbed his hair, 
pondering the answer. I think you're right. She might feel uncomfortable. She seems to be someone complicated. Kaneko would comment, making Issei smile nervously. Well, when we met, she was a bit strong-willed. But she's pretty good when you get to know her, I can tell you. Issei would exclaim with a big toothy smile on her face. Oh all this, does she have a name? Akino would ask with great interest. Issei opened his mouth to reply, but was interrupted by Rias. We better not talk about trivialities anymore. We have to concentrate on what summoned us today. I would comment Rias seriously. Kaneko. Yes, President. She would say the Alvina, looking at everyone with more seriousness than normal. Yesterday I managed to capture the presence of two exorcists in our territory. I don't know why. They're here, but it's most likely not a good thing. We don't want to start any conflict with God. Rias would clarify with an implacable tone. We'll just keep an eye on them, until they leave here, oh let's find out what their real plans are. Rias would cross her arms imposingly. We have already suffered many casualties in the war that took place a thousand years ago. I don't want demonic blood to flow again because of us. Watch them. Kiba would ask, somewhat at odds with his mistress. I'm okay with not escalating the violence, but we could demand an explanation from them. They're on our turf, and they have to be pretty dumb not to know it. Good observation, Kiba. Rias would comment with a smile, agreeing with his servant. Fine. In that case, you'll follow Kiba's plan. Remember, don't create a conflict over superficial things. Yeah, they would all answer with a smile. Hey, President. They all looked at Issei, seeing how he was raising his hand with a nervous smile. K. Susid, Issei. I, I haven't finished my training yet. Do you think it would be possible to skip this job, at least until I finish my exercises? Issei would ask, rubbing his hair nervously. Rias silently stared at him for a few seconds, pondering her answer. Okay, this is a pretty simple mission, so it's not necessary for all of us to get involved. Issei clenched her fist tightly with a smile after Rias's words. Nonetheless, Rias's tone would make Issei immediately serious. Make sure you come to the academy every day and participate in the club meetings. I'm not going to be as lenient as last time. Am I clear? Yes, boss. Shout Issei, in military pose. Perfect. Rias concluded with a smile. The rest of you already know what to do after school. Meanwhile, I need to talk to my brother about personal matters. He trusted you. Yeah. They would answer again, leaving the room. Once everyone left, Rias sat back down and gave a big sigh. First. We have that female familiar intervening in my brother's pre-arranged plans. And now, followers of God happen to happen upon where the Secreote is located. Rias would think tiredly, turning his pen around. If I think about it, it's still a bit early for the angels to have discovered Hyodo's existence. Besides, God would never send mere priests to deliver the message to him. In fact, it would be utter madness for him to tell the secret to others. People other than your archangels. Rias would look up at him with a mysterious glint in his eyes. Most likely they came for another reason. The question is, what? Line jump. Interesting. Tiamat would think, seeing how Issei had created a purple magic circle that was just as big as him. He has his own magic circle from him. That means he's not as linked to his mistress as I thought. I can't believe he did it the first time. Issei would think out loud, completely surprised. When Tiamat explained it to me, I swear it seemed a lot more complicated. Flashback. To create blocks, magical powers, and other things, you will need to materialize your magic circle. He would explain Tiamat, creating a small celestial magic circle to serve as an example. Due to your low magic reserve, you can't create magic circles. But, if you use Balance Breaker, your stats will skyrocket considerably. You shouldn't get too confident anyway. Your magic reserves will still be very small, so make sure to use every drop of magic with a valid, thoughtful, and coherent purpose. If you don't, the consequences will be very serious. Finn Dell flash back. Good job. She would congratulate Tiamat with a small smile, moving closer. This process is the easiest to achieve. The others are a bit more troublesome, because you have to materialize those ideas into reality. Using the magic circle as a medium. Issei's armor broke into a thousand pieces, making him stagger a bit. Demons. 
the chestnut would curse itself. Don't you think it would be better to use all the augments of my boosted gear and that's it? I can only spend three minutes with the armor, he would comment, a little annoyed by his weak condition. No. Issei would look at Tiamat in some surprise. It's a good idea if you want to master these techniques in one day, but that's not the point right now. Ideally, you should learn these techniques, while developing a greater tolerance for your balance breaker. Even if you don't have proper training for control of sacred gear, it will help you get used to the armor a bit, and it will most likely extend your duration by a couple of seconds due to less wear and tear over time. I agree, partner. Even so, we must find someone who understands how sacred gears work, otherwise, you won't be able to go any further. I would help you myself, if I didn't find myself locked in this stupid gauntlet. Deedrag would clarify with some helplessness at the end. That reminds me. Tiamat fixed her gaze on Issei's right arm. Don't push your limit. You may have an uncanny affinity with my kind, but if you push yourself too far, I'm sure your dragon arm will make it very poorly for you. Issei would look at his arm with a slight frown. What can I do to remedy it? Don't worry. I would answer Tiamat with conviction. I can heal you. Issei would breathe a small sigh of relief. That's good to know. To be honest, it's something I was starting to worry about. Oye. Issei. Issei would look up in intrigue after hearing Tiamat's slightly worried tone. What will we do when you finish your training? The dragon would ask, fully expectant of the response of her future lover. Hum. Issei would hum seriously. I know. He would snap his fingers. Would you like to go to the cinema? Sounds interesting. The dragon would answer with a small smile. Line jump. Shit. Issei would think with a purple face, seeing the amount of money he had. I should have seen how much yen I had left before inviting her. The chestnut would throw himself on the bed, giving a great sigh. Not even enough for a ticket. I guess I have no choice but to cancel when I get there. Issei blinked once upon hearing her own words. Wait. How did I get there? I don't think he thought of just showing up at the house with a magic circle, knowing that my parents are there. The doorbell that resounded in the home was the answer that fell immediately, making Issei turn pale. Who can it be at this hour? Issei's father would wonder, seeing that it was 8 p.m. When he opened the door, he was slightly startled to see a slightly tall woman, with long light blue hair, along with a white outfit that resembled that of a teacher. The somewhat cold blue eyes made the man swallow unconsciously. What's on offer, miss? I come to look for Issei. It was the dragon's simple response, causing Lord Hyodo to slightly widen her eyes. Issei. What did he do now? Mrs. Hyodo would ask, butting into the conversation with a scowl on her face. Denoting the great beauty of the woman, she is sighed. Let me guess, did he try to spy on her when she was naked or something like that? That, the dragon would ask with a neutral expression, while she put her hands in her pockets. He promised me to go out somewhere today. She would answer, while she looked inside the establishment in search of Issei, completely ignoring the brown-haired parents. Did he promise to go out? She would wonder both parents, looking at each other with a raised eyebrow. How did you meet our son? They both asked again. The dragon blinked in boredom and gave them a look. We are friends. At this point, Issei's parents were beginning to wonder when Issei had a friend, and secondly, why the hell did he want to go out with him at this hour? She is my tutor. Issei would yell from the stairs, making everyone look at him. I pay him with my allowance, so don't worry. Immediately afterwards, the brown-haired man made some signs with his hand, indicating that the woman should pass. Before going to Issei, Tiamat slightly lowered her head as a sign of greeting to her father and mother. Conversation wasn't his thing, he was only interested in starting a conversation with people who were really worth it, according to his criteria. The parents looked on genuinely impressed as Issei seemed to be apologizing for something, while the beautiful woman didn't seem to care. Finally, they both entered the brown-haired bedroom without saying a word to their parents. Honey, since when does Issei have an allowance? I don't know, but I'm fine with him paying for his education. If he's serious about it, maybe he'll do well in life when he turns 18. Oh I hope so, because I'm not taking care of him for two more years. Line jump. The light in the room would be off. The only thing on in the room would be the computer that her two friends had given her for her last birthday. 
Both Tiamat and Issei were sitting on the bed, watching a movie on the monitor. I blew it. I should have looked at my savings before I made a promise I couldn't keep. Issei would think, disappointed in himself. The brunette rubbed his hair nervously. I just hope he doesn't get too bored. He would think he, not having the courage to see Tiamat's face. The dragon would be closing and opening her eyes heavily, indicating that she was falling asleep. It had definitely been a disaster. After a few seconds of nodding, she dropped her guard for a second and rested her face on Issei's shoulder. The chestnut was startled a bit by the action, as was Tiamat. I'm sorry. The dragon would comment, rubbing her eyes. No, I'm the one who should apologize. Issei would answer with a slightly down smile. If you're sleepy, you can sleep. All right. She would answer the dragon, supporting her face on the chestnut's shoulder with great affection, making Issei visibly startle. I meant to sleep on the bed, Issei would think with a nervous smile on his face. Tiamat opened her eyes when she felt how Issei's hands carefully took her face and hip, and dragged her with great delicacy, leaving the dragon's head above her legs. This is more comfortable, right? Issei would ask with a small smile. Yes, the dragon would reply, snuggling as much as possible as a smile appeared on her face. This is so much better. You are a perfect pillow. Thanks I think. The dragon snuggled even more when she felt Issei caressing her head. A small blush appeared on her face as her smile widened even more. Unfortunately, Issei was watching the movie as if to catch the rather cute reaction the dragoness had. Line jump. And good. The voice of the renowned Sirzex Lucifer would be heard in the occult club, waiting for a response from his sister, who was in the usual seat. They haven't returned yet. The latest information was given to me by Kaneko two hours ago saying that they had just been found. Rias would answer seriously. Perfect. The Mao would nod. And as for the other problem. First I prefer to solve this, I consider it as a priority problem. Hyodo's familiar can wait until then. Rias would answer, looking towards the window with a lost look. The chances are very low, but if they come for the Sekariote, it would be a big problem. Rias would turn her gaze from him to his brother. Don't you think so? We agree on that. Sirzex would put his hand to his chin. I think. It's inevitable that Issei finds out about the prophecy. What really bothers me is the fact that the angels have been able to guess the little trick that we devils have in hand. Because if God decided to tell the secret of the prophecy to some mere priests, it means that he is already aware of our plans. Who are those aware of the prophecy? Rias would ask quite curiously. Only the faction leaders, and the archangels of God. Also. It is possible that the Hakuryuko knows about it. Of course, they don't know that I am in charge of transmitting the message. The Mao would comment, with a mischievous smile at the end. So that would mean that one of our own has betrayed us. Rias would ask with a frown. Do not rush. Sirzex would answer sternly. We still don't know why they are here. The Mao would give a small sigh of exhaustion, looking towards the window. And as for the familiar girl, if she's just a very close friend of Issei's there won't be any problem. The man would frown visibly. But, if she becomes much more than that, I'll have to kill her. Without the Sekariote finding out about her, of course. You're sure? Rias asked with a bit of concern. From what Hyodo told me, he's quite a strong familiar. Don't worry, sister. The Mao would place his hand on Rias's head with a smile. There is no familiar that is stronger than a faction leader. They would be the last words of the demon, before disappearing in a magic circle while he waved his hand with a smile. A second later, the calm was completely broken. Laughs. Akino rushed in, carrying Kaneko's unconscious body. Asia appeared supporting an almost unconscious Kiba due to the extensive damage he had on his body. What happened? Rias almost jumped up from his seat upon seeing the condition of two of his servants. Luckily, we got there just in time. Sona. Rias would widen her eyes as she couldn't, after seeing the heiress of the Citri clan accompanying her entourage. We were training new group techniques in the forest, when we felt a strange energy coming from the south. It was covered, but it was so big that we could feel it thanks to the proximity. Does does that mean he was an archangel? Rias bit her finger hard as she felt that things were getting too complicated. Yes, but it's not what you think. It was a fallen angel. Sona's answer made Rias look at her in complete surprise. Apparently, he is looking to start a war. He plans to control the Excalibur, 
and kill us both in our territory to achieve his goal. Asia tightly clenched her fists. She only let us go, because Issei wasn't with us. She said it would be a lot more boring if he wasn't around. Wait, the fallen angels already know about the Sekariote. Rias would ask in complete disbelief. Remember that Rainer followed orders. Sona would say, adjusting her glasses. Surely the Archangel must have received some information, and I come to the conclusion that Issei is the Sekariote. Quote dot dot dot. How many fragments does it have? Rias asked, regaining her calm. Only one. Who is the Archangel? Kokabil. What happened to the exorcists? There were two women. They only suffered minimal damage. They were carrying two fragments of the Escalibur, but Kokabil didn't seem interested in taking them at the moment. Probably because he thought it would be more interesting to have more enemies in the final battle. Why did my entourage end up getting involved in a fight that didn't belong to our faction, when none of you knew Kokabil's true objective to begin with? Quote dot dot dot. It was Kiba. He couldn't help but chase after them when the exorcist sensed the presence of a holy sword. Akino would answer seriously. Rias would look at Kiba with a slight frown, then sigh. I imagined. Rias, shall we tell your brother? Sona would ask seriously. No, I would reply quickly. My brother is busy with a lot of trouble, and I wouldn't want to add another pile of work to him. Besides, this is my chance to show him that my entourage is much stronger than before. She would finish, with a small smile at the end. Rias, you won't be able to take on an archangel. Sona would argue sternly. I can't do it alone, but with you I'm sure I can. Sona would heave a big sigh. You always get me into trouble. A small smile would appear on the Citri heiress. Okay. But I warn you that if things get complicated, I won't hesitate to call our brothers. Okay. Rias would agree. What happened to the exorcists? Most likely they are looking for Kokabil. From what I know, I temporarily abandoned Kuo to find the other Escalibur shards. Sona would argue with his typical serious expression. Guys, everyone would look at Kiba after hearing his words, only to see him fall to the ground, unconscious. This is bad, I'll have to talk to him, before he decides to act on his own. Chapter 13. The England Client. At last, Issei would yell with a huge sigh of relief. A day off, she would conclude, sprawling out on the bench not caring that Tiamat was next to him. They were both in the park last time, preparing another barbecue for lunch. You've done very well this past week. You've mastered all the basic spells now. Tiamat would nod, proud of her student's progress. However, that doesn't mean you're using it deliberately. Remember your position, she would add Tiamat, with great seriousness as she gazed at Issei. I know. Issei would sit back correctly on the bench while making a small face. My magical reserves are a big problem. Tiamat would rest her hand on Issei's shoulder, making him look at her expectantly. Don't worry. The dragon would comment with a small smile. Once you get a lot of stable augmenters, your magic reserves won't be a problem anymore. You'll have to train a lot to get to that point, though. Tiamat would bring her hand to Issei's abdomen and give it a light squeeze, causing Issei to start laughing. Stop please. He commented on the chestnut between laughs. You tickle me. You see it. The dragon would ask with a slightly bigger smile when she saw Issei's reaction. Your body is not yet sufficiently trained. It will take a long time for you to achieve a physique according to your needs. The dragon would keep touching her abdomen for a while longer to annoy him, starting to laugh a little. I got it, can you let me go? Please. Finally, Tiamat gave into Issei's pleas while covering her laughter with one of her hands. Seeing this, the brunette couldn't help but smile at him. She had changed a lot in a very short time, she seemed like a different person. At least it was different when she was with him. Tiamat's melodic laughter stopped suddenly, when she saw that many men and women were looking at them with some intrigue, although they quickly averted their gazes. Those looks, the dragon would comment quite seriously, denoting her discomfort. Why do humans look at us like we're weirdos? I mean, I think we're well, camouflaged. She would whisper in Issei's ear, making the latter realize his surroundings. It's true. Issei rubbed at his hair as he looked around. Last time we came on a weekday and very early, so there was hardly anyone in the park. I would think Chestnut out loud. I think they see us this way, because it's weird to them strange. 
Tiamat would blink when she found no logic in it. You know. Issei would rub his hair with a nervous smile. Humans live between 80 to 90 years, so the age difference is very different from the supernatural. Ah his eyes. You are a 25-year-old woman who is talking alone with a 17-year-old minor. Do you understand? Not quite. Tiamat would comment, putting a hand to her chin. The age difference of humans is much more contentious than that of supernatural beings. Let's leave it there. Issei would declare. I see. Tiamat would put both hands on her legs and lower her head a little. If you want, we'll go. I wouldn't like you to feel uncomfortable because of me. Are you kidding? Issei's question made Tiamat look up from him in mild surprise. I don't care exactly what other people think. We're having a good time, and that's what matters. A big grin between teeth would catch a glimpse of Issei's face. Don't you think so? Tiamat's features slowly turned into a cute smile. You're right. She would get up, heading towards the barbecue. Issei just looked at her with a smile when he saw that she had managed to clear up her discomfort, although he never had the chance to see the small blush that had formed on the dragon's face. Now that I think about it, Issei thought, watching as Tiamat began to remove the meat. When I turn 21 I'll stop aging. Most likely I should move to the underworld so they won't suspect, oh brainwash everyone. Issei would lower his head with a somewhat sad look. Somehow or another, I will part ways with Matsuda and Motohama in four years. Did you get any information about what happened recently? Tiamat stuffed a piece of meat into her mouth, causing Issei to snap out of the little world of hers. Issei took the meat and left it on the plate, giving him a small smile for Tiamat's actions, which quickly faded into utter seriousness. So far, none. A week has passed, and there hasn't even been a trace of that cadre or the exorcists. I understand. Tiamat would nod, looking up at the sky. If you need help with that guy, don't hesitate to call me. He would conclude, opening his mouth to denote his beautiful fangs, taking a deep bite of the piece of meat. Issei could only observe with a smile how Tiamat seemed to enjoy the meat with great satisfaction. A fallen angel, a cadre, Issei would think, repeating Tiamat's action. I just followed orders from my boss. Issei frowned slightly after remembering Rainer's words. I wonder if that guy has something to do with it. Line jump. Rias, it's already Saturday. It's been a week. Sona would comment seriously. Are you seriously planning not to tell your brother anything? Don't worry, Sona. Rias would answer, moving a chess piece. Everything will be fine if we cooperate. Both women were alone in the occult club, playing chess at the president's very distinctive table. I get it, but I'm saying that no one would risk dying if we asked for more help. Not necessarily your brother. Sona would look up from her, adjusting her glasses. I'm talking about Azazel. Rias would look up with wide eyes. Azazel. Yeah. Sona would nod. He's a pretty laid-back man, and he's not interested in war at all. I'm sure he's not into Kokobiel's plans, and he could be of help to us. No. Rias's withering response immediately silenced Sona. First, we would have to go to England to visit him in Grigori, which is very difficult, considering that we have to leave Kuo. Second, there is no guarantee that he will not tell my brother what is happening. I prefer to keep him out of the equation. Sona would look at her seriously for a few seconds, until she would finally sigh. Whatever you want. Their conversation would be interrupted when someone was heard opening the door. Send for me, President. Issei would ask, bowing slightly to the two women present. Yeah. Rias would answer with a smile. I need you to complete an assignment. Rias gave him the pamphlet, making Issei look at him strangely. The others are already on their own jobs, so this one will be for you. Rias would give him a big smile. I hope you'll make it this time, Issei. Yes, President. She would exclaim the brown-haired man in a military pose. Very good. Rias would close her eyes with joy. Akino's bike is waiting for you outside. Issei just nodded and left the room, leaving Rias and Sona completely alone. Do you think he can defeat the cadre? Sona asked, moving the horse away from him. It's the Sekariote. Its potential is limitless. I know it from the great improvement it showed in the last battle against Razor. Rias would take one of his pawns and start playing with it. I'm sure this last week he hasn't been wasting his time. Issei would ride Akino's bike, opting for absolute seriousness. I could use the new ability Tiamat taught me, 
and appear like any demon would. But I don't want to spend that much magic on something stupid. You never know what could happen. He would think the chestnut, going out at a tremendous speed with the bike, as usual. Line jump. Again you will ask why a demon. Rings the doorbell. Right. Issei would wonder, seeing the light blue door with gold stripes of the small apartment. Issei only had to wait a few seconds for the door to open, so he gave an energetic wave. Hello. You summoned a demon, right? The brunette waved his hands quickly. Are you confused? Of course you are, aren't you? I'd really like to get out of the magic circle, but, Issei would rub his cheek with a nervous smile. I have a little problem with it. Bueno. Entra. Hey. Issei looked visibly confused as the man seemed not to be surprised in the slightest. Issei studied the appearance of the subject well, seeing that he was a man in his thirties. He was wearing a gray-colored kimono, along with completely black hair, except for his front part, which was a blonde color. His eyes were a soft violet color, along with a well-trimmed, well-groomed beard. You, are a devil, right? The man would narrow his eyes a bit, giving a rather mysterious touch to Issei's eyes, even he swears he was even a little scary. Line jump. Amazing. Issei would think out loud, after sitting in one of the three incredibly comfortable armchairs that were in the small apartment. It doesn't look like it's from here, this design isn't typical of Japan, she would think aloud again, studying the entire room in quite amazement. Absolutely all the furniture was exported. What did this person work for? Well, let's have a drink. The man would appear leaning against one of the doors, while he held a tray with two glasses, a cooler and a jug that looked quite luxurious. Ah, I'm still a miner. I see, the subject would comment, sitting in the front chair and leaving the tray on the small table in the center. I wanted someone to share a drink with. Is that your wish? No se puede. No. Issei would respond quickly in defense. The contract will be made when he grants his request, and is fully satisfied. I only have whiskey. The man would accommodate the glasses, and then give the chestnut a passive look. Will you be okay with water? Yes yes. Issei would answer, a little surprised by the subject's request. The noise of the ice falling into the glass was the last thing heard. Three hours later. Ha 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 ha. So you're riding your bike to see the humans just because you don't have enough magical reserves. The alcohol flush was already visible on the man. See, si, Bueno. What type? The man would yell, then laugh. Her voice is starting to irritate me, Issei would think, looking away with a stick face. But I need this contract. The chestnut would drink a big sip of water. That was fun. The man would declare with a satisfied voice. What do you want as compensation? Already, Issei asked, completely surprised by the simplicity. The demon wants my soul. Asked the subject, narrowing his eyes with a mocking smile. No way. Issei waved his hands in defense. Talking to someone is not worth it. Oh. Eres generoso. My mistress prefers fair transactions. The chestnut would comment, with a finger raised to emphasize his words. So how about that? The man would point behind him, denoting a flower box. It's not a copy. But. It seems very expensive. Now I don't have anything else on hand. The subject gave him a passive look again as he raised his hands. If you don't want, I can give you my soul. Th then I'll take the painting. The chestnut would exclaim, a little startled. The man would get up from his seat with a smirk. Perfect. Issei gave a small sigh and looked back at the man as he removed the paint. What a strange guy. Just as he was about to receive the painting, a call rang through his cell phone. Chairwoman. Issei wondered out loud, picking up the call. Chairwoman. Issei. I just wanted to tell you that we're going to an abandoned factory. Kaneko tracked down a vagabond demon in that position. Send me the location. No. Rias instantly interrupted Issei, making the brunette blink in surprise. We'll take care of it. If you're done with your assignment, leave the compensation at the club and continue training. We'll need you as strong as possible by the time the cadre returns to Kuo. Okay. President. Issei ended the call, and gave the man one last smile before saying goodbye. The subject followed him with a mysterious look, even when he had already closed the door. The man would give him the last sip of his drink, leaving the glass on the table. This will be an interesting vacation. Line jump. 
Issei and Tiamat were in the ladies' home together with the little dragons, watching as the brown-haired one was doing his last magic circle tests of the day. Tiamat was leaning against the doorway, looking at him with her hands in her pockets as she thought carefully. I see that it has progressed as I had thought. His gaze continued fixed on each of her movements, like the sweat that ran seductively down his face. Seeing him so focused on his training made me remember a couple of things. Tiamat raised her gaze to the sky, a small smile spreading across his face. Now that I am completely clear of everything that happened to me, my desire to fight is crying out for me to find an opponent. It is exactly the same feeling that I had constantly in the past. Tiamat would look at Issei again, increasing her small smile a little more. I think I owe it to him. It's good to have what characterizes you again. The dragon would raise a hand to her chin with great seriousness, so that after a few seconds she would sigh. Kill your opponent, Issei asked, abandoning her training and looking at her in complete disbelief. That's wrong. I don't think you need to kill someone to enjoy a fight. Issei exclaimed, frowning as she approached Tiamat. The dragon looked at him with both eyebrows raised as she realized that she had said her last words out loud. Is it wrong for you to kill your opponent? Tiamat asked staring at him. Of course, Issei nodded several times, to emphasize his words. Well, Tiamat would opt for a more serious look than usual, approaching Issei in a somewhat threatening manner. For me, killing your enemy is not bad. He commented matter-of-factly, his face a few inches from Issei's. How can you say that? Issei asked, completely impressed. For you, the life of your opponent has no value. Of course not. Tiamat's immediate and cutting response would make Issei look at her with even more disbelief. He is my enemy, so his life is worthless to me. No matter what you tell me, you won't change my mind. Tiamat would get a little closer to Issei's face, causing her nose to touch. In fact, I find your reasoning totally stupid. Tiamat would raise an eyebrow. What will you do when an enemy comes with the intent to kill you? Will you tell him you just want to have a friendly showdown? Do you think he'll listen to you? Do you think he thinks your life has some kind of value? Why would I think about it, if you're getting in his way? Puro, do you seriously think that without killing your enemies you will achieve your greatest ambition? At that moment, Issei's somewhat enraged look changed to a shocked one. My, ambition, protect your loved ones. Tiamat's last words would make Issei look away, unable to answer anything about it. Won't you use all your power to kill him? knowing that this person can kill all your loved ones. Will you just do it, to keep that absurd ethics intact? Will you let your own values destroy your life? Tiamat turned away from Issei's face, her hardened look turning into a much more compassionate one when she affectionately placed her hand on Issei's cheek. Listen to me well, Issei. The brunette gave him a look that was full of doubts and internal fights. When you entered the supernatural world, you abandoned your everyday way of life, you abandoned your humanity. Now, you must adapt to this new world. Especially you, that you are the bearer of the underdeveloped lizard. Thousands of enemies will come with the intention of hurting you, directly or indirectly. They won't stop until they see you dead. Therefore, why would you have to deal with the death of worthless subjects? Tiamat would place her other hand on Issei's cheek, forcing him to look into her eyes. How do I know that his lives have no value? That's very simple, Issei. That's because you are someone very good. Tiamat would finally smile with impressive purity, causing Issei to widen his eyes as much as he could not. How could a person as good as you have enemies that have values? And if, in a resounding case, that is so, I am sure that they will not take long to understand each other, directly or indirectly. They won't stop until they see you dead. Therefore, why would you have to deal with the death of worthless subjects? Tiamat would place her other hand on Issei's cheek, forcing him to look into her eyes. How do I know that their lives are not do they have any value? That's very simple, Issei. That's because you are someone very good. Tiamat would finally smile with an impressive purity, making Issei widen her eyes to the point of being unable. How could a person as good as you have enemies who have values? And if, in a resounding case, that is so, I am sure that they will not take long to understand each other, directly or indirectly. They won't stop until they see you dead. Therefore, why would you have to deal with the death of worthless subjects? 
Tiamat would place her other hand on Issei's cheek, forcing him to look into her eyes. How do I know that their lives are not do they have any value? That's very simple, Issei. That's because you are someone very good. Tiamat would finally smile with an impressive purity, making Issei widen her eyes to the point of being unable. How could a person as good as you have enemies who have values? And if, in a resounding case, that is so, I am sure that they will not take long to understand each other. Why would you have to deal with the death of subjects who have no value? Tiamat would place her other hand on Issei's cheek, forcing him to look into her eyes. How do I know that their lives have no value? That's very simple, Issei. That's because you are someone very good. Tiamat would finally smile with an impressive purity, making Issei widen her eyes to the point of being unable. How could a person as good as you have enemies who have values? And if, in a resounding case, that is so, I am sure that they will not take long to understand each other. Why would you have to deal with the death of subjects who have no value? Tiamat would place her other hand on Issei's cheek, forcing him to look into her eyes. How do I know that their lives have no value? That's very simple, Issei. That's because you are someone very good. Tiamat would finally smile with an impressive purity, making Issei widen her eyes to the point of being unable. How could a person as good as you have enemies who have values? And if, in a resounding case, that is so, I am sure that they will not take long to understand each other, causing Issei to widen his eyes as he couldn't. How could a person as good as you have enemies who have values? And if, in a resounding case, that's the case, I'm sure they'll understand each other soon, causing Issei to widen his eyes as he couldn't. How could a person as good as you have enemies who have values? And if, in a resounding case, that's the case, I'm sure they'll understand each other soon. Issei would lower his gaze, not knowing exactly what to answer. But I, Tiamat would lower her hands to the brunette's shoulders, giving him a light squeeze, making Issei look at her immediately. Listen to me well, I know it will be very difficult for you to kill coldly, because life is valued much more from the point of view of human society. I'm not saying you understand now, because I'm sure you will when the time comes. Moment. Tiamat's smile would quickly twist into a commanding gaze. I just hope you understand in time. Those last words made Issei give him a look full of confusion, which was completely assuaged when Tiamat gave him a friendly little slap. Don't think about it anymore. She would exclaim the dragon with a beautiful smile, which made denote her fangs. Now, the important thing is that you rest well and come back tomorrow with all the batteries. I'd like to show you a couple of new things. Issei cupped his bruised cheek with a somewhat surprised look which finally turned into a smile. Okay. Line jump. Issei threw himself on the bed, as if it were a potato sack due to his mental and physical exhaustion. He closed his eyes with the intention of going to sleep, but he couldn't do it thanks to Tiamat's words that kept hanging around in his head. Issei would fix his gaze on the ceiling, his eyes reflecting his doubts. I have killed vagabond devils with the president before. But she herself says that death for them is her salvation so I never thought of them as someone, but just as puppets, completely empty inside. The chestnut would give a big content sigh. Quote dot dot dot. It's very different to kill someone than if they have reasons to live. I only killed you, because my boss had ordered it. The broken female voice thanks to crying and the intense pain, tormented Issei's mind. Issei would take his hand to his face, with the intention of covering his eyes. Quote dot dot dot. Why did he have to remember that? The brunette would wonder, clearly referring to Rainair. Line jump. Sorry to interrupt your morning workouts, guys. But something very important has come up. No problem, president. They would all declare in unison. The only one who didn't, was Kiba who seemed to be buried in thoughts of him. None of those present missed this, not even Issei, who was the most clueless of all in that sense. Quote dot dot dot. Kiba. Issei would wonder in a low voice seeing the strange attitude of his partner. It's been like this since Kokobiel came to Kuo. Kaneko whispered, making Issei look at her. Her attitude towards her has gotten progressively worse. Although yesterday was the point of no return. The point of no return. Issei would ask quietly, very puzzled. He was inattentive in the fight, and that resulted in a disaster. Asia almost got hurt because of him, so Rias punished him with a hundred lashes. Issei widened his eyes in shock. A hundred lashes, he thought, 
not knowing that the president was so strict in her punishments. We haven't found any trace of Kokobil, nor of his two assistants. But recently, Kaneko claimed to see both exorcists hanging around Kuo, but she lost sight of them. As soon as he finished saying those words, Kiba suddenly got up from his seat and it didn't take him a second to open the door that led to the exit. Kiba, Issei yelled, getting up from his seat. The others got up almost at the same time when they saw the blonde's reaction. Kiba didn't say a single word, he just closed the door and disappeared from the room. Damned, Issei cursed him, with clear intentions to forcefully force him back. Let it go, Issei. Rias's focused words made the brunette stop. Short. Chairwoman. Issei asked, quite surprised. His companions reacted in the same way to the words of his mistress. It won't do any good to stop him now. You guys just make sure you do the search together, because we don't know how strong those two exorcists can be. I would order Rias. But why are you acting like that? Issei asked, worried about Kiba. Don't worry. Rias would comment with a smile. When this is all over, he'll be the same as always. Because, ellipsis quote, that's something only he can tell you, Issei. Akino would interrupt Issei, causing the brunette to look down from him with even more doubt. Line jump. I think that in these days you have already learned to use each spell at its proper moment. Tiamat would comment, being clearly satisfied with the result. There is only one other thing left for me to teach you. With that, the training will end, for now. The dragon would conclude, with a small dangerous smile at her last words. Brilliant, Issei exclaimed, clenching her fist with joy. What would be the last thing you want to show me? She asked herself, with great curiosity. Let's move a bit away from the cave. I wouldn't want to destroy it. Tiamat would comment innocently enough, starting to walk away. Destroy the cave, Issei thought, really confused. I think at this distance it's fine. The dragon would declare seeing that they were on the edge of her small territory. Before we begin, I would like to tell you something. The dragon added, putting both hands on her hip. Every supernatural being has healing power. Some are more effective than others. Some aren't even good enough to heal a small wound effectively. Do I also possess that ability? Issei would point to himself quite curiously. When I say everyone has it, it's everyone. It would clarify Tiamat. But the vast majority have very poor healing abilities, and there are many others who don't even discover said ability. For example, Tiamat would raise her hand from him, creating a small ice cube that floated in circles. I can use my own ice to heal wounds, but it's only effective on very superficial wounds. I see, Issei would reply, following the small ice cube with his gaze. Another thing you should know, is that when you heal someone, you not only heal their wounds, but also replenish their magical reserves. Do you know where I'm going with this? The dragon would ask, narrowing her eyes. Issei would lower his gaze a bit. Quote dot dot dot. That means I'll have to expend a large amount of magic. Exactly. And you're not a person who likes too much, let's say. You must use it carefully. Okay. Issei would answer seriously, to then raise both his hands with enthusiasm. Now can you show me? Tiamat would close her eyes and look away. No idea, eh? In each person it can be presented through a different factor. It can be through magic, touch, blood, blah, blah, blah. The dragon would indicate, opening one of her eyes. It's impossible to know what your healing factor is. The only way to know is by trial and error. But that doesn't matter now. Tiamat's last words would make Issei look at her in slight surprise. There's no use finding your healing factor, as long as you don't have enough augments to bring your magic reserves up to at least a statistic, which is considered above average. Do you know something? Issei would lower his head with a small depressive aura around her. This not having many magical reserves is starting to annoy me quite a bit. Tiamat would drop her hand into the chestnut's hair, causing him to look up in slight surprise. Don't worry. The dragon would comment with a small smile. First you have to improve your physical condition as much as you can. Then, we will find someone who can help you with your control over. Balance Breaker. I'm sure that when you achieve full control of the armor, all your stats will explode their limits. Of course, this also includes your magical reserves. I'll do my best. Issei would yell decisively. Tiamat would nod with a smirk at the sheer determination of her future lover. Now, 
I'd like to show you what you could do when your magical reserves are much larger. Tiamat's gaze would harden from one second to the next, making Issei take a step back. Get away a little. She would command the dragon, raising one of her fists. The first thing you should do is accumulate a large amount of magic in your hand. Issei was visibly startled. When she saw how Tiamat's fist began to charge with an enormous amount of magical power, which began to shake everything around her. The second point is to give it shape. Tiny cyclones encircled the dragon's hand at different points, causing the blizzard to intensify even more, creating a completely icy and menacing aura around Tiamat. And the easiest. Tiamat would have her back to Issei, looking into the forest. Release the strike at your target. Tiamat flexed her arm back, charging a great force into her attack, which was even audible thanks to the noise of her clenching fist. Just before releasing her attack, Tiamat suddenly widened her eyes. The burial of the ice. Tiamat lowered her hand to the ground in one swift movement, creating a huge icy explosion that forced Issei to take cover due to the magnitude of the attack. The only thing Issei could hear was the huge, deafening rumbling that such an attack produced, since he couldn't even open his eyes from the ice debris that was shot in all directions. After a few seconds, the blizzard suddenly disappeared, along with the huge sound of the explosion, which was still resounding like a huge echo. What do you think about it? Tiamat asked with an amused smile, seeing that a part of Issei's body was covered in ice. Hey, at least you would have warned me to get away a bit. Issei finally uncovered her face, being completely frozen by what she was witnessing. Further, there was a huge straight line behind Tiamat that was absolutely frozen. Huge ice cliffs rose where there had been trees. Not to mention the clear drop that had now taken that area. Apparently, Tiamat's attack had generated a huge line of destruction that devastated everything in its path, replacing everything destroyed with those huge ice spikes. Seeing that Issei could not formulate a word for what he had witnessed, Tiamat decided to speak. Do you like ice? She asked playfully as she winked, blowing her palm in her direction, creating ice particles. Line jump. That man again. Issei wondered, receiving a pamphlet from Rias. Apparently you've got a regular customer, Issei. Rias would comment with a smile. He has sent for you five times, counting this last one. Yes. Issei would reply, rubbing his hair. He is a very strange guy, all the orders of him are very strange. He would think, completely puzzled. When you complete this request, I would like you to join the others in continuing the search for the exorcists. Has there been any news from Kiba? Issei asked instantly. Rias's expression changed instantly. No. Ah. Been completely missing for the last five days. Issei would heave a big sigh. I hope that idiot is okay. Don't worry about it. If we find the exorcists, sooner or later we'll meet him. Yes, yes, I know. Issei would comment, rubbing his hair irritably. What I can't understand is why you let him go without telling him anything. Because I told you to investigate the whereabouts of the exorcists. Hearing her answer, Issei would look at her in confusion. Even though Kiba is away from me, he won't be in danger, because technically he is under one of my orders. Do you understand? Not really. Issei would look down from her, trying to find the answer. If it's under my command, he won't challenge his master. If he doesn't challenge his master, he won't be considered a wandering demon. Issei looked up from her wide-eyed at the answer. Do you understand now? I see. Issei would high-five his hands in understanding. You are awesome, president. You always think of everything. Issei would exclaim with a chuckle. Now. Don't waste any more time and go. Rias would wave her hand sweetly, receiving a quick nod from the brunette. Line jump. I wonder what that guy wants now. Issei thought as she walked through the park, heading towards the mysterious man's house. I always drink with him, or we play cards. If you feel so lonely, why don't you find, cheaper company? Being so locked in his thoughts, he couldn't see someone turn in his direction, crashing imminently. Oh. Issei groaned as he fell to the ground, rubbing his head in pain. Wait. Issei would blink in confusion. That didn't hurt in the slightest. In fact, he felt quite fluffy and comfortable. The brunette would fix her gaze on a pair of black heels, now knowing that she was a woman. Issei slowly looked up from him upon discovering that the woman hadn't even flinched from the shock. How big? He thought with his eyes wide open, 
seeing how two huge mounds that looked like small mountains stood out quite a bit in the figure of said woman. They are noticeably larger than Tiamat's, and Tiamat's are already larger than Rias. In short, they were monstrous. Are you okay? Suddenly, the woman's breasts completely faded into the background for Issei when she could see her beautiful face. Specifically, because of her crimson red eyes that gave off absolute discipline. I apologize I did not see you. The woman crouched down and held out her hand. Thanks to that, Issei was able to get a full view of her beautiful face. Her pale, fine skin made a perfect contrast to her long black hair with violet highlights that spread finely along her frame, reaching to the ground in her current position. She had somewhat unruly triangular bangs that fell freely across her entire forehead which made her look quite pretty. Some rather delicate and small lips that made you want to steal a kiss from her if the opportunity presented itself. Her great beauty was in perfect contrast to her voluptuous figure, and her black secretary outfit only made the lady look even sexier. Issei would shake his head, realizing that he had rambled too much on the figure of the lady. Don't apologize, it's my fault for not paying attention to the road. Issei would accept the woman's soft hand with pleasure. No problem. The woman would answer naturally, helping Issei. The woman fixed her gaze on the pamphlet she had picked up for a short second though she quickly returned it to the brunette. Gracias. Hem. Penemu. That's my name. End of chapter.